External pressure is part of the PAVE checklist, checking before your flight and having a proper risk assessment. External pressure, there's a lot of that. Um, if I put a scenario here, say you own an aircraft and you want to fly it to Connecticut, Bridgeport, Connecticut for your cousin's wedding and you're going with your wife or something. Um, so passengers, you have to consider passengers as part of your risk assessment. They might be a little bit of a distraction to your flight, uh, friends and family. Biggest, another bigger thing is time. Uh, are you on a schedule? You have to get there at a certain time. Another, what you want to consider for uh, when you're flying, you never have to get somewhere when you're flying. You always want to have a, a backup plan. If you're going on any cross country, you want to make sure you have some essentials with you because you never know. So the airport could close on you all of a sudden when you're getting fuel and you might get stuck there or weather might come in. I've had it happen to myself where adverse weather came in and you get stuck at the airport and you can't do anything about it. You can't get get there itis. So you want to always have a plan B. Money. Obviously money is a concern too. Um, you might want to go to an airport that has cheaper fuel during your flight, um, but you never want to have to get there. And obviously aviation is a little bit more expensive than other modes of transportation, but it also has its uh, you know, flexibility and it's easier sometimes and quicker. So there's some natural causes that can occur, like you have to use the restroom during your flight. So you have to consider that for your flight. Uh, especially if you're going on a longer cross country. I've had it happen on a cross country flight before, two and a half hours into the leg. So you want to consider that when you're choosing how long you want to fly and if you want to make any pit stops along the way. Of course, you're going to need fuel as well. You got to consider that. And along with that, you have hazardous attitudes, which is a really important part of your risk assessment. So for the hazardous attitudes, you have A, which is anti authority. So for anti-authority, that's basically saying you're not following the rules and like the regulation, what the regulations say, such as minimum fuel required or passenger currency or your own currency. Um, so the proper antidote for anti-authority is to follow the rules they're right and it's the safest option. Again, in Heritage, we have a safety culture. And vulnerability is the idea of thinking that you're invincible and that it can't happen to you. So the proper antidote for that would be, it can happen to me. And you want to make sure you are more conservative in how you approach things and in your risk assessment. Next is impulsivity. Impulsivity being you're rushing. There's a tendency, especially in your training and just flying in general, to want to rush and have to get their ideas to get somewhere. So as I mentioned previously, you always want to have a backup plan. Um, you don't want to rush. You want to make sure you follow your checklist. Don't skip any of the checklist items. Don't assume you know it because it could save your life. One checklist item you miss could be catastrophic or rushing to get somewhere we've seen has resulted in many accidents, uh, sea fit accidents and just any, you know, mechanical malfunctions. And like with JFK Jr. how he was rushing, had to get their items to get to his destination in Martha's Vineyard. That's what happened, you got spatial disorientation. So, impulsivity, you wanna make sure you slow down. Next one we have is macho. Macho is really taking uh, a lot of risk and chances that are unnecessary. So, uh, a common one I like to use is, let's say the minimum safe altitude over the beach in a non-congested area might be 500 feet over any person vessel structure. But then what happens is that you're at like 500 feet and someone's recording you on the ground at that low altitude buzzing over the beach. The FAA might consider that a bit of a macho attitude and also careless reckless operation of the aircraft under 9113. So you want to consider that as part of macho and just taking risks such as doing barrel rolls and different things in the airplane that might not be the safest option to do. Or showboating to your passengers, that's another thing in macho. So don't take uh, risks and chances that are foolish. Be safe. Lastly, we have resignation. Resignation is in the idea, uh, if you ever in an emergency, that you want to basically give up and you feel like you're hopeless in any given scenario. So you want to always go back to your training and make sure that you're following that. 
because it'll kind of come second nature to you. And that's why we practice the emergency procedures in the airplane so many times, like engine fire and flight, electrical fire, emergency descent, steep spirals for commercial and more. But the proper antidote for resignation is to make sure that you follow your procedures and know that you are pilot in command and you have authority of that aircraft.